we come to the next main topic in our microcontrollers, and that's using interrupts. We're going to cover the difference between what's called polling and interrupts, and then talk about how to use the interrupts in the microcontroller, and then finish up with an example of a timer interrupt in C. We have polling versus interrupt. This is a little example of polling. So here's our infinite loop uh, in the program inside of main. And then polling, we would check this pin. We're going to check uh, pin two of port D and see if it's low. And if it is, then we're going to do something. And so that's called polling, where inside of our main program, we check the state of that pin. And We've done this in examples with the timer interrupt flags. We had it uh, instead of if we said while the flag was zero, then just sit here. And so polling, one problem with it is it ties down the, the central processing unit. Uh, it ties down the microprocessor because it can't be doing anything else while it's looking at the that bit or flag or what have you. And to get around that, there's special hardware in the microcontroller that handles interrupts. And this has a few advantages to polling. First of all, the microprocessor can be doing other things, so it doesn't have to look at our bit or our pen or whatever. The interrupt handler takes care of that on its own, and so we get a more efficient program. Secondly, interrupts have priority, so we, we can have several sources of interrupts. We could have external interrupts um, on different pins, so each one of those pins could generate an interrupt, and we could have interrupts from timers, so they could generate interrupts, and we can set the priority of these things. Well, we can't set them, but they are set, so we can choose which ones to use based on which um, one we all want to have the highest priority. And so that means that if they happen at the same time, we can we know which event will be handled first. And then another advantage of using interrupts is that they can be masked. And that means you can enable or disable the interrupt by setting one bit, which can't be done for this. Um, it's more, we would have to add additional code in order to get this polling to be executed or not. So here's an example of what an interrupt would look like. Inside of main, we would just do whatever it is we normally do. So we would have our while loop in here. And then whenever pin two of port D is zero, then the interrupt handler would automatically jump to our code that handles that event. So this do something would get executed just automatically. And so we don't have to worry about checking that and because the interrupt handler is going to do it. And this should become clearer whenever we get to an uh, example. What occurs whenever an interrupt takes place is that the microcontroller finishes its current instruction. So this would be inside of the main body of code that you've written. The microcontroller would finish its current step, and then it would save that step and jump to a fixed location that is a fixed location in the memory. So whenever a certain interrupt occurs, execution will move to a specific place in memory that is dictated by which interrupt occurred. And then we, the microcontroller executes the interrupt service routine. So we have a specific body of code that handles um, the event of that interrupt. And then once the ISR is done executing, then we go back to the place in the code where we were whenever the interrupt happened. So we'll go back to the next instruction where we were. So one result of this is that it's not possible to know where in the code an interrupt might be serviced. So you don't know where you're going to be inside a main whenever an interrupt takes place. And so you can't pass data to an interrupt. So if you want your interrupt to share data with the main function, then you have to use global variables. So for our purposes, we're going to use the fact that timers can generate interrupts. 
So instead of having to pull the overflow flag for a timer, for example, we can just configure the interrupt handler to execute the interrupt service routine whenever that or whenever that timer interrupt flag is set. And here, whenever we talk about fixed locations in the memory, then we're referring to the interrupt vector table. And so these are different names for the vectors and they're given in the data sheet for a specific microcontroller. So we'll see this in the example in a second. Actually, we'll see it uh, just so here are the names of the different interrupt vectors. So, for example, timer counter zero overflow flag. Whenever this interrupt occurs, then execution is going to jump to the, the place in memory defined by this vector. So here's the name for that vector, timer zero OVF vector. And the way we use that is we define a function outside of main and it's an ISR. So this is the type of function and then we would give it the name of the vector. And then here's where we put the code that handles the interrupt. Again, 